two. All right, welcome everybody to the October Steering Committee. Uh, first thing I want to go ahead and make an announcement of Buchanan, uh, former Commissioner Veronica Buchanan's mother passed away this weekend, so let's keep her in our prayers. And let's move on to the agenda. First thing is approved minutes. I call on Vice Chair Pettis Reed. Mr. Chairman, I have uh, read the minutes. I haven't found anything. If anyone has any questions, I do have a hard copy of that here, a printed out copy. So, Mr. Chairman, I wish to move that they be approved. All right, got a mo motion. I got a second. Got a second. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Let's move on. Next, is there any public comments? There's no public comment. So let's go to confirm the revised 2024 holiday calendar. I'm going to turn this over to Commissioner Be uh, Commissioner Beverly. He had some questions the last one. So uh, you want to go ahead and take this? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I know last month we had talked about uh, a few things regarding this. Uh, after further research, I think we just we're going to stick with what the state has provided. Uh, we, we aren't going to add anything outside the state holiday list. Okay, so everybody understand the only thing we're adding here is Tuesday, December 31st, New Year's Eve will now be a state uh, holiday. So what Commissioner uh, Beverly was talking about last month and we deferred it is no longer on the table. So only thing that we're doing is the same as last year except we're adding Tuesday, December 31st. So do I have a motion? Second. Second. All right. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Let's move on. Next is confirm James Averwater for the Codes Enforcement Adjustment and Appeals Board three year term expires September of 2024. Is Mr. Averwater here? Come up, sir. I'm sure everybody knows you, but just go ahead and tell everybody who you are and go from there. Mr. Chair. Thank you, sir. Uh, good evening, Jim Averwater. Of course, I'm uh, up for uh, another term on the Codes Enforcement Board. Uh, we don't have to do a whole lot. Fortunately, our codes inspectors are very well trained and uh, they do a good job of, of uh, making sure things are done right without creating any hassles. But once in a while, we do get an appeal from someone and it is important to that person. Um, I'm more than willing to uh, stand up and serve again and and do what I can if anybody needs me. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions? Okay. Uh, this will be a uh, this will be a yay or nay. So uh, all those in favor of James A. Water for codes enforcement say aye. 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 Opposed? Congratulations, sir. Next is confirm Mayor uh, Nomination Michael Shirley to the Planning Commission four year term August 2024 to August 2028. Do I have a motion? I have a second and a second. I've, I've, requ I've been requested to do a roll call vote on this, so. Commissioner Cush? Aye. Commissioner Beverly? Yes. Commissioner McAdoo? Yes. Commissioner Rather? No. Commissioner Johnson? No. Commissioner Reed? Yes. Chairman Harris? Yes. All right, let's move on. Next is confirm Shante, I hope I'm saying that right, Graves for Judicial Commissioner. Is Ms. Graves here? Come on up, Ms. Graves. Just uh, introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about you so we know who we're voting on. Thank you for coming. Hi, I'm Shantae Graves. I work at the Rutherford County Judicial Office. I've uh, been there for 13 years and my background, um, I graduated from MTSU in criminal justice in Oakland Community College in Michigan and paralegal. And I'm just up for reappointment. We have any questions? All right, I need a motion to confirm. Motion to confirm, and thank you for all I you do. Sorry about that, Mike. Didn't mean to interrupt you. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you, ma'am. Great, thank you. Congratulations.
All right, next is confirmed Gary Farley, reappointment for the Board of Zoning Appeals. Uh, vacancy five-year term expires October 2024 to 2029. Uh, Mr. Uh, Farley had chest pains and is in the hospital, so he's unable to be here. So um, he wanted to, to uh, come up and talk, but I told him uh, we'll take care of that. So do I have a motion to confirm? So moved. Second? Second. All right. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Next, I need to announce stormwater advisory board vacancy. I need to announce two beer board vacancies. Three-year term expires October of 2024 to October of 2027. I need to announce one juvenile detention board of commissioners vacancy. One-year term expires in August of 2024 and is till uh, August of 2025. I need to announce three audit committee vacancies, one school board member, one road board member, and one county citizen. I need to announce three public building authority vacancies. These are all mayor appointed. Terms expire January 2026. All right, that's all of our announcements and confirmations. Uh, next is our lobbyist report and Will, come on up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the steering committee. It's a pleasure to be here today. I will be brief. So County Services Convention is gonna be here in Rutherford County, October 23rd through 25th. Um, during that convention, I expect they're going to uh, discuss and hopefully adopt in their platform, the real estate transfer tax, as well as the lottery excess um, funding in support of our initiative. When that happens, it will become a statewide um, initiative of all the counties and um, the County Mayor's Association has already done that. Mr. Chairman, if that's the case, and I suspect we'll be back here in November um, with a draft resolution for the committee to consider and then ultimately for the commission to consider um, in support of both of these initiatives. All right, um, I have talked to Will and I wanna be really aggressive in trying to find a bunch of avenues for revenue, so I'm gonna be coming up with a list and to discuss with all y'all. Uh, please keep in mind the failure rating on some of these ideas are very high, but it doesn't mean we can't try. And that's what we're gonna do and that's in, I'm gonna get with him and get on all those. I also wanna talk about the mineral severance tax. Uh, all y'all know I'm really behind this. I had met with uh, Rogers Group and um, my best uh, coming out of that meeting was it's gonna be tough. So, but that doesn't mean we're not gonna keep fighting and we're gonna keep doing what we can. So to try to bring as many revenue streams as we can. So me and Will will be doing that. I will be informing you of every single thing I do. I will be discussing with you every single thing I do and uh, get as many ideas as we can. If you have any, let me know. Second, I have reached out to the delegation and asked for a meeting of our annual meeting. And so far, uh, the answer has been no. So I am still working on that. And I'll try to do everything I can to make that. I want to do it in October because they have session in January and we want to be able to get what we want to get passed before, you know, last time we do it in January is too late. So I'm still working on that. And, and we're just, it's not a, it's just a date thing. It's not a animosity thing. It's just a date thing. We're just trying to reach it. Uh, is there any questions for Will? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Will, what convention is happening October 23rd? The County Services Association Convention. The County Services, um, and by the way, I, I recommend, if you haven't ever attended a fall conference and trade show, which will be October 23rd through 25th, you should go. It's, it's county mayors, county commissioners, county highway officials, Rutherford County is a member and has been for many years. So we're the host county this we're year. We're the host county, that's right. Is there anything we need to do extra to host, yeah. throw a party, you know, what, anything we need to do. It's a pretty policy focused thing. So just, okay. uh, just attend really. And it'd be good to attend. It would, okay. it would be excellent to attend. Where, where will this be? At the Embassy Suites, Embassy. October 23rd through 25th. Um, the, the fall show is a large show. There'll be probably 500 people there. Um, you know, Thank you. Will. They, 
They come in from all over the state. Will we need to sign up RSVP? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. So there's a registration process. County Technical Assistance Service, UT, they handle the registration. You can register on site or go on the website. Uh, I think it's tennesseecounties.org is the website. Yeah, you can, you can register online. Could I ask Carla to make sure that all commissioners get a email notification to as a reminder absolutely more questions for will thank you will thank you all right next is our hr report miss stevenson mr chairman while sonia is coming up probably the issue with our legislative delegation is the upcoming election uh it's that meeting would be a couple of weeks before the election so they're probably focused on that so maybe maybe they'll respond a little bit uh, better in November maybe I don't think it's anything but but us trying to get a date together so yeah, yeah. You're, you're you're absolutely right um, I'll keep us informed on this what they're really wanting to do is they're wanting to get the speaker of the house have a meeting and us piggyback on that so uh, I don't want that. I want us to have our own meeting, but we'll we'll do whatever we can. We're open to to anything we can do to get better on our relations with everyone. Uh, go ahead, Sonia. Hey, we're, uh, good evening, everyone. We're going to focus on the HR snapshot, which should be on your iPads, and we're going to look specifically at the uh, month of September because that's the month that we just finished. We we do have some items in October already, but September is where we're at. Um, for ADA, we just had uh, six different activities that were related to either courtroom assistance, most of which are for somebody hearing impaired or um, the interactive process for someone who has ADA. <clears throat> Personnel changes, the, the largest thing is we had was uh, promotions and transfers into positions. We had 19 of those specifically, and we've uh, seen an uptick in military uh, credit applications as well, and so, um, one of the things that TCRS does for certain times during your service will give you credit for your military service if you're not drawing a pension from the military. Audits, um, we just finished, and it's in the October column, the audit of the remainder of our records, and so it ended up being over 3,000 records that were scanned um, medical, so we now have everything paperless, so we're in the process of making sure they're all labeled correctly and we'll get those loaded electronically so the department heads can pick, they can actually open up their employee's file from their desk, um, make it easier for them. Benefits, the biggest thing is TCRS applications or estimates and Social Security. I had 21 of those in the month of September, uh, people needing assistance. <clears throat> Community involvement, we had five different events. Um, Tennessee Achieves was the biggest. And if anyone is looking for a volunteer opportunity with all your free time, you know, Tennessee Achieves is looking for mentors um, for high school students who are gonna be attending college and needs assistance with their um, application process. We didn't have any events this month, so. That's that. Leave, we have um, active, we've seen an uptick in our FMLA. We have 166 active FMLA applications. And we're seeing an uptick again in the military. We have 27 active uh, military personnel on leave um, out serving our country. So legal services, we had nine different activities and those could be anything from Title VI surveys to um, an investigation or things of that nature. Offboarding, we had 22 resignations or terminations during the month of September. Uh, onboarding, we had 24 new hires and the biggest thing, and 46 new poll workers uh, elections is getting ready for the upcoming election. So we onboarded uh, 46 new individuals and Paul's um, onboarded 30 new volunteers this month as well. Um, we did some policy changes and those are primarily revisions to the job descriptions for the departments. We had 18 promotional activities for our employees 
And those are um, things that the community offers as a benefit to our employees, whether it be um, um, discount on a mortgage loan or something of that nature. Recruitment, we had um, 1,300, almost 1,400 1, uh, activities during the month. Um, we received 500 applications. We had 108 declination letters. We did 186 recruitment activities trying to get, those are some of the biggest items that we had. We had um, 109 special projects this month. And the primary thing is being we're doing motor vehicle report, reports for uh, the insurance department to make sure that they're in compliance. Anybody who is driving a county vehicle is there have a clean MVR report. Evaluation and testing, we had 136 different tests with the biggest items being those for pre-employment, whether it be an MMPI, drug test, a physical, things of that nature. We had 122 people that we trained um, this month and those um, items were under business, et business ethics, uh, drug-free workplace, and professional development, sexual harassment, Title VI. Those are some of the items that we trained on. We had uh, 255 interpreters in our courts and also in our departments this month. Um, really seeing an increase in using interpreters in building codes and also in our probation department. The courts also see a fair amount, but we are seeing an increase in our building codes department. So we had uh, 255 uh, activities with the primary language being Spanish and the next language being Arabic. And that concludes the snapshot. Are there any questions about the snapshot before we move forward? Okay. The next item is just the jobs that we posted in the month of September. And so this tells you by department and what position was posted and how many applications that we received for those posting as of September 30th. Just to not let you know what we have open out there for the public to apply for. Um, the any questions related to our postings. And then the last item was on your table, because I was actively still working on this before I came. This is the vacancies that we have and, and what vacancies are in each department. So it tells you um, what we're actively recruiting for. And that concludes my report. Oh, I failed to mention um, uh, Commissioner Phillips asked, remind me to announce that the health department was giving flu shots and COVID shots for anybody that is needing their vaccines can go to the health department for those shots as well. Questions? I have one. Um, on our handbook, when is uh, going to be updated? Is it already updated? Yeah, we just finished it May 19th of this year. May 19th? I think it's May 19th or 17th. We literally just approved. I mean, we, we update it. We can update it. It's a living document, so we update it as needed. Is, is there a particular policy that you... No, I knew we had some things we wanted to get in there. I just hadn't followed up on it. So... Okay. Yeah. Well, just let and me know. And what is this you gave us about holiday leave and CTAS and well, all that? Well, last, last month you asked me to bring information about whether or not we could add... Um, the day before Thanksgiving, so I just printed off the, the law, our policy in the handbook, and then uh, the law as it relates to TCA, just so you would have that today. Okay. Is there any questions? Mr. Chair. Get him first, and you. Go ahead. Uh, could you briefly touch on this uh, email that went out regarding Cigna Insurance with risk management that kind of caused a little... Uh, concern with retirees and county employees. Could you touch on that, please? So I can a little bit. I don't want to really get out of my lane too much. So uh, I would I would follow up with Ed and his team to make sure. But Cigna has been in negotiations with Murfreesboro Medical Center for some time, and um, the negotiations are still in place. And they have to have an agreement by December 31st. I want to say is the date that they have to, that's the, that's when, if they don't have an agreement, we will, the employees will no longer be able to use Murfreesboro Medical Center. But I know that they're still uh, announcing that they're in active negotiations. Now, 
as my understanding, anybody who is a current retiree on the um, the the Medicare the county's Medicare Advantage will not be affected in either way because Cigna no longer has that plan. We still have the plan, but it's not under Cigna, so it will not affect individuals. Is my understanding who are on that plan? Well, they did send out another uh, email that oh we made a mistake so you know i just wanted you to make yes okay. uh commissioner johnson uh ed elam will be at budget ed elam will be at budget thursday night and uh, i'll i'll give him and uh, send him an email let him know that you uh, are concerned about that and would like an explanation is that okay okay just an update on that, if I could, Mr. Chairman. Cigna is not the only carrier that's having trouble with uh, Middle Tennessee Medical Center. Other major carriers are as well. So it's, it's not Cigna alone. There are others that are under negotiations as well. And we were told, the insurance committee was told, told Chairman McAdoo, that uh, uh, it's not uncommon for them to go late into the negotiation process before they reached some type of settlement. It's alarming, uh, especially to employees, um, but it's something that uh, Cigna is doing to benefit customers, which, which are us. To negotiate our rates. I will say that Murfreesboro Medical Center employees actually have Cigna insurance, so they have that for their own employees, so they're probably just negotiating those rates like you said, Commissioner Phillips? Well, let me clarify something. The reason I asked uh, Tonya is in the email it said to connect, contact you or the risk management. Yeah, and it did say contact HR. I asked, I asked Ed to retract that. <laughs> Mr. Chair. Uh, I know I brought this up at our last meeting and Sonia provided some insight. Uh, just a quick comparison we, I just looked at the starting salary for some of our certified law enforcement at year one. Uh, we would be at around 53,000. Uh, Mur Murfreesboro Police Department's at almost 63,000 starting off. Franklin's at 60. If you fast forward to five years, which is kind of where we struggle as a county, if we can retain them that long, we see a higher success rate. Um, a deputy can expect to probably make around 57,000, but compared to Murfreesboro, that's at 70,000, and compared to Franklin, that's at uh, 65. So we're entering into a larger deficit. Uh, but one thing I found that was kind of odd was a step five SRO on Rutherford County's pay scale would make $56,688 a year. If that same deputy decided to leave Rutherford County Sheriff's Office and go to the Murfreesboro Police Department, their SRO salary would be near $77,000. So when we compare our benefits package and everything, I understand certain aspects are lucrative, but you're also talking about a 20 year or $20,000 a year difference. And that compounded over the life of their career is a lot of money that they're looking at. And I know for sure, certain we've lost a deputy that was a supervisor and a long time deputy in, for our agency here that went to a neighboring county and he took a lot of training and experience with him. And we hated to see him go, but he has to do what's best for him. But this is something I want us to think about because these numbers are what's hitting the families hard, especially when they're looking at one of the biggest medical providers in our community may not be in network from now after this year. So just something I want you guys to think about, especially the ones on budget, as we look at some of the decisions over the next couple months and get started on budget for next year. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, one of my concerns, and I spoke out for this at the last meeting, is that I'm concerned about each month coming out of public safety, we have all these positions that are not filled. And I'm specifically concerned about booking officers. They're one of the most highly stressed jobs we have. And by general law, we have to house prisoners. And I, he brought up some good facts, and I am interested. Did you look at the booking officer salary? I did not, just because it's a comparison to municipal agencies. I only looked what we compared at right around Rutherford County, especially with the SROs moving simply just down the road. 
uh, within the same county, but I wonder if we would face the same issues with other counties and their booking pay. Yeah, I would like to get that information with the eight surrounding counties that border Relford County, just specifically how our salary, salary uh, is, uh, how our salary compare with the eight other counties surrounding us. Uh, this is this is very important. This is very important. I think we have reached the serious stage with booking officers, and uh, we need to get on top of it quick because that high stress causes physical pain. And last last month we even lost two, if I'm not mistaken. And so we need to jump on this quick because this is a highly, highly stressful position. Booking officer, he locked he or she is locked up in that jail from twelve to sixteen hours nowadays because of the shortage. And they don't even get to come out and go to lunch and things like that, and, and that's not good. So if you can get that information, I would like to have it by next month. Okay, which, which do you want the same entities that we compare to now? Or, I, I mean, we've, we've already started the, the process of gathering information for the, the budget process. We've already started that and uh, had to get permission from a budgetary standpoint to, to order the salary survey. So we have done that um, to try to have that in place, you know, to, to do that. Are you? What I'm interested in is the eight surrounding counties that have sheriff departments, that have booking offices. I would like to know their salaries compared to ours. And I think maybe we can have that by next month. Okay, and I, I do want to make one clarification because we call them a little bit something different. So the booking officers are the ones who, when somebody comes in, we actually book them. That's intake. Correct. But then we have detention officers that are in in the pods with the or I think they call them pods. I know the others Depend do. Yeah, detention uh, in the officers. pods with the inmates. Are you talking? Which one are you talking about? The booking? I was talking. <laughs> First priority is booking, but it, it wouldn't hurt to go ahead and get detention. Since each month I'm looking at this report and we always have about 10 to 12 dis detention officer vacancies and booking about the same and it's been going on for a, a good period of time. So while you're getting booking officers, you may want to look at detention also. One other thing, we're also losing some firemen to other agencies, paramedics. This is sp spreading all across emergency services. Your salary study that was being done, is that comparing those agent those positions as well? When do you think we might have that back? Well, we won't have it until in time for the budget process when we start having the meetings with the departments. So okay. it takes a minute to gather all that information from the agencies surrounding us. And also we, we gather from Smyrna, Murfreesboro, Laverne as well, and uh, Metro Nashville is one of the bigger ones that we look at. So it, it will take them some time to get that back to us. Gotcha. And, you and, and I will tell you, we, we don't have, uh, contrary to popular belief, we do not have a problem staffing firefighters. Okay. I, I, what about SROs and deputies? SROs are typically, typically we don't hire them outside. Those are usually promoted internally unless somebody, um, because they have to have special training to be an SRO because they're going into the school. And so typically they try to promote those individuals from within. Um, so I think we may have um, a vacancy for an SRO if I had to look, let me see. Well, what I'm trying to comprehend is listening to Commissioner Beverly and I have, I go both ways. One, people are working here. I mean, they're coming here wanting to work. And so I guess my second question is, what is the recit, what is it, the retention rate that we have? So like a, you hire somebody first year, 
do we lose uh, lose them the first year, second year, third year, or? So it so it varies. Um, I usually tell people, and this is where Mr. Mc Commissioner McAdoo got this, is that if we keep somebody, or maybe uh, Mr. Commissioner Beverly said it, uh, five to seven years, we're pretty much going to retain them. So the hard part is, is when um, there's not like this pool of trained people out there. So when we bring hire people, we're having to hire people that don't most cases don't have the skill sets to do it and then train them to do it in-house and so i mean it's, it's anything public safety is going to be a little more sensitive to their job duties and so what happens is either they can't cut the muster because you've got to have legally you've got they've got to be able to do certain things whether it's a firefighter a paramedic police officer any of those public safety jobs paul's and so if they can't do the duties of the job, then we have to release them. So there's some that we are releasing because they can't complete the duties. And then there's others that are being released that says, I don't want to complete the duties. And so we do lose a percentage, and I don't know the exact, I'll, I can, you know, off the top of my head, but um, most of the people, if they stay five to seven years, that's where we're, we're seeing them to stay. So it's... It's just those entry level people that we're primary losing. We've lost three people that I can think of that had over 15 years of experience that went on to other agencies that like one of them went to the marshal's office. I mean, that's, that's a different animal. I mean, you know, so that's somebody's, that's on their bucket list, I would say, you know, wanting to go to the marshal's office uh, to do those jobs. I, I don't, I, I don't re recall the person that you're talking about that left that went to a sister like agency, a county agencies. The ones that I can think of left to go somewhere like that. Um, and and the biggest thing is, you know, we talk about compensation. We do this every year, and, and the commission, you know, um, has been between the the commission and the mayor's offices over the last five, six years have worked together to increase the pay. It was just when you get so far behind and then the cost of living, um, what we're dealing with is the cost of living. It just makes it hard to catch up for us. And our salary survey, here's the other problem. The salary survey comes in and, and, it's, and it's measuring based on the most recent act they had. So let's say um, we've got a couple of entities that we compare to, they'll get pay increases in December. So we'll have those pay increases, but we won't have what they're going to do in June. You know, we can only anticipate what they'll do in June. And so um, it's just, you know, you don't know. You don't know what they're going to do. So y'all can't decide. Y'all are having to decide, do I, do I go? It's not just as easy as just raising booking officers. It's not that easy as far as budget goes. Right. So, but I mean, I agree with Commissioner uh, Chairman McAdoo. I'm getting concerned about that as well. And I think that's something we need. I don't know. I'm going to be honest with y'all. I don't know the answer. <laughs> well, I surround myself with people smarter than me because I don't, I don't necessarily know the answer here. But this is something that this information needs to get back to us before next meeting. If you can do it, Sonia. Oh, before the next meeting? Yes. Okay. Next meeting. No, when do you when do you want it before the next meeting? No, I want it at the meeting. At the next meeting. Okay. Next meeting. Okay. Is that all right with you, Chairman McAdoo? Next meeting? Okay. All right, thank you. Is there any other questions for Sonia? Mr. Chair, could you do the same thing for certified patrol deputies that you did for booking clerks? Or not booking clerks, for uh, uh, booking officers and detention? That you would do that for patrol deputies and SROs? Okay. Anybody else? Thank you, Sonia. Thank you. All right, next is our litigation list. Uh, it's on your iPads. Does anybody have any questions? Of course I do. Uh, Nick, on uh, item number four, can you give me an update on that, please? Uh, that item has uh, been recently filed and um, certain motion practice is occurring uh, in the case. Okay, it's very in the infancy, right? Yes. Okay. Um, that's all I have. Anybody got any other questions? All right. Is there any other business? We're adjourned.